Yeah, so I'm going to be talking to you today about um, a rat eradication, an ongoing rat eradication project that's occurring on Lehua Islet, um, and some of the initial seabird response we've been seeing. So where is Lehua? Um, this is a little uh, um, animation that Pat put together. Thanks, Pat. So, oh, yeah, there we go. So that's Kauai. That's where you are right now. And Lehua is uh, 90 miles west of Kauai, uh, three quarters of a mile north of Niihau, and 140 miles northwest of Oahu. It's a really important island for seabirds. Um, and so we have uh, Lazan albatross out there and blackfoots. Um, we have red-footed boobies and also brown boobies breeding there. Frigate birds are hanging out there a lot. No breeding there yet, but they are there in numbers, harassing all the other birds that come in. Uh, breeding colony of uh, red-tailed tropic birds, uh, lots of wedge-tailed shearwaters. But there's petrel and also um, a colony of the endangered band rump storm petrel. As well as seabirds, uh, the island's also really important for native plants, and that's one of the reasons why um, a rat eradication project is important for the island, because it's an ecosystem restoration project. Um, also important for sea mammals, so there's a lot of monk seals that hang out there. There's one eyeing me as I'm paddling around frantically in the water. And they also lounge around a lot on the shore. And then the seas around Lehua are just absolutely heaving with uh, marine life. So there's lots of fish all over the place, uh, fish everywhere. And uh, this is one of the reasons why it's been important to Hawaiians for hundreds of years. And there's a lot of Hawaiian structures on the island um, to indicate use over the years. And so there's our enemy, um, Rattus excellens. I tried to choose pictures of rats where they look particularly evil, that one on the top left in particular and then pictures of birds looking cute on the right. So the rats are, are targeting, um, in particular, um, chicks and eggs, um, and also small species, like on the bottom there, the boars. And so rat eradication has had a bit of history on the island. Um, in 2009, there was an attempt to eradicate rats, and unfortunately, it failed. Um, and so in 2017, a second attempt was made to eradicate rats with three aerodrops drops of difasinone, and that was completed on September the 12th, 2017. And um, the carcass there on the bottom right is what we're all looking forward to seeing out there. And so we've been looking at post-eradication monitoring um, since that point in time using a wide range of techniques. Uh, so there's a lot of rat monitoring techniques out there, cameras, chew blocks, bait piles, tracking tunnels, various kill traps and live traps. And then seabird monitoring techniques, so looking at the prey, uh, bow monitoring, bow cameras, seabird plots, and song meters. And the monitoring coverage has also been extensive, so we're not just concentrating, obviously, in one area, but we're all over the place. So these are all the bows that were monitored last year with the different species. You can see they're, they're scattered across the island. Um, what's not on there, let's see if this thing works. Oh, yeah. Also the albatross, which are all sort of here in the, in the crater. And these are song meters that were deployed across the island, um, island in 2018 um, in similar locations to where they've been deployed in 2015. So we have a before and after for the song meters as well. And then uh, various other rat eradication devices. So we've got lots of cameras scattered all over the place, snap traps, live traps, and bait stations. So you can see basically we're, we're all over the islet um, looking for rats, looking for uh, how, how this eradication project has, has gone. So first we'll look at the rat response. Um, for camera monitoring, we have 51 trail cameras and blank. I left that off. Uh, it should be 14 burrow cameras as well. So we have a lot of cameras scattered across the islet uh, looking for rat sign. And so far, um, since the project ended, since the rat last drop occurred, there's been 238,000 plus hours of camera monitoring. And we have had some rat sightings since. So 12 rat sightings since the end of the bait drop. That's uh, over a 16 month period. And I would emphasize those are sightings, so it's not 12 individual rats. It could have been the same rat in, in multiple locations. Um, interestingly enough, all of the other monitoring types, which uh, amount to over 20,000 trap nights, uh, we've had zero signs. So the only place where we've actually picked up rats at all um, since the eradication occurred uh, has been on the cameras. And that's the sort of kind of perplexing um, sightings that we're getting on camera and that you get like one rat and then nothing and then a couple rats and then nothing and then a rat, nothing, rat, nothing. So it's not a, a steady increase in rats that we're seeing. 
It's just the occasional rat popping up on cameras. Um, but a little disturbing is that they are spread out. So, you know, there, there's some over here, there's one here. These are all the different sightings that have occurred on the cameras since the rat eradication, the last bait drop. Um, and the response to that um, by the Lahore Steering Committee is to, um, every time a rat appears on a camera, is to put out um, bait stations in the area where the rat was seen and try to get that particular rat. And uh, if you want to hear more about um, the project and how that side of it is working out and what the plans are, um, you should see Patty's talk on Friday, which is about restoring offshore islands and lessons learned. So we're going to look at the initial species response of our, our favorites here, the birds, the seabirds. And like I said, this is year one, so you know it is only the first year. Um, and uh, normally you'd see a lot of response in many years to come. So it's the first year. Firstly, in terms of rat activity on burrow cameras, so this is 2016 before the rat eradication, 2017 um, when the rat eradication occurred mid-year, and then 2018 after the rat eradication. And uh, you can see rats were a very regular fixture on the burrow cameras um, in 2016, and then the numbers have dropped. And now, in 2018, we only have one rat on our burrow cameras the whole year. So obviously there's very few rats left, so they're not gone, but they're massively, massively reduced. And then in terms of depredations by rats, so between 2015 and mid-2017, before the rat eradication occurred, uh, we recorded 150 rat depredations of seabirds. And since that point in time, we've re recorded that amount, which is zero. So that's really positive. So we look at uh, species by species response, and we've got different metrics depending on the species to understand how these guys have reacted in their first year. So this is uh, Blackfoot albatross in black and there's an albatross in gray. The number of chicks that were recorded by year, um, off and on since 2002 surveys to 2018, and they have had a sort of strange fluctuation on the island. Some years they do really well, some years, years they do really badly. Um, but this is the year um, just before rat eradication occurred, so they, did, they had their worst year ever that year. And now, after the rat eradication, we had the second highest uh, number of chicks counted on the islet for black-footed albatross, and the third highest number of lasans. Now, who knows whether that's tied into uh, rat eradication or not, but it's, it's a positive sign. I mean, these guys do get, as we saw today, you know, impacts from things like plastics and so on, um, but it's definitely positive to see some really high numbers of chicks out there. Redstone shear rivers, these are uh, birds that are impacted pretty heavily by rats. The rats like to chomp on their eggs and their struggling chicks. Um, and we've got two metrics here. So this is Mayfield nest success on the left and significantly higher uh, nest success rate in 2018, not compared to 2016, but definitely compared to 2015. So from Mayfield nest success metric, they have done better this year after the rat eradication. Conversely, and these are the uh, call rates that we got from our song meters um, data analyzed courtesy of conservation metrics. Um, in 2015, strangely, the call rates are much lower in 2018 than 2015. So different response depending on the metric used. But I guess if you think about it, you know, um, the call rates may be increasing in years to come when the chicks that have survived from this year come back to breed a couple years later. So you may not see a response to call rates for a couple of years. Red tail tropic birds. Um, they actually had uh, a worse year than 2015 or 2016, um, but Eric, my co-author, and I were talking about this, and Eric was saying that this was the worst year for tropic birds on Oahu in 13 years of monitoring. So presumably this is just an impact of um, oceanic conditions and, and has nothing to do with what is happening to the birds on Lahua. Bulwars petrel, this is a bird that we have seen some pretty good response. Now anyone who's been on Lahua looking for bulwars petrels knows they're a really hard species to find. Uh, they don't make things easy for us. They're hidden under piles of rocks, in tiny little holes. You hardly ever see them. And uh, basically, you just walk around the island barking like a dog and looking like an idiot, and they bark back if they're there. <laughs> and so, um, and I won't do my impression of it right now. Uh, but we've had, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. There you go. <laughs> I'm gonna, Rick, your dog's gonna bark at me, so I won't do that again. <laughs> but they do respond to that. Uh, so yeah, 2015, we only had four bowlers petrels that we found. Uh, 2016, we had seven, and then 2018, it was like a dog colony. There were bowlers petrels barking all over the place, and so we found 41 burrows. It was a massive difference. And um, 
Also, when you look at the number of chicks um, that were in boroughs, confirmed in boroughs between the years, in 2015 and 2016, out of those boroughs, we didn't get confirmed any chicks at all. And we had 47.2% of the boroughs confirmed chicks. So, you know, it's kind of obvious they're not being eaten. Um, strange, and I was disappointed to see this. I know Matthew and I have talked about this, um, but apparently this is correct. Uh, we didn't get a change in the call rates um, between the two years. Um, but it is not significant. So basically, um, no change in the call rights for these species, even though they were barking everywhere. Um, Banyan storm petrel, uh, no significant difference between the two years in comparison. Um, slightly lower, but no difference there. Um, but yeah, they are there, and this is a species that will assuredly benefit from uh, rat eradication. And then the species near and dear to my heart, the newels, um, you know, they're a really rare bird out there, um, and we only get them calls every now and then. So in 2012, 14, 15, and 16, we didn't get any calls at all. It's nice to see that 2018 has had the highest calls, but I mean, it is only seven. Um, but what it does show is that, you know, presumably if rats are fully extinguished on the island, we might see species like these endangered seabirds returning to breed. So that's the seabirds. Um, and then there's this chap here. So this pile of corpses, these are uh, black knotty heads. And can anyone guess what they're from? No prizes to the people who work on my project. Yes, there it is. So the barn owl. So this is a confounding factor here. And um, you know, the barn owls do eat a lot of rats. They also eat a ton of birds. Um, if you remove the rats, then the barn owls are going to continue eating birds. And um, uh, there's a lot of work being done to eradicate them on the islet. But that is a confounding um, factor looking at um, the change in uh, uh, species response over time. And here's a particularly a telling series of pictures. There's a barn owl grabbing a little wedge tail chick, pulling it out, ripping its head off, and then watching as the adult uh, wedgie comes in and then actually mantling in front of the wedge tail. So yeah, the, the barn owl is a really big problem out there, and it's definitely one we need, we need to consider. And uh, between 2015 and 2018, the two years we compared, uh, there's no significant difference. So the barn owls are there, and there are numbers. So in conclusion, um, rats, rats are almost eradicated. I'd love to say they are eradicated, but uh, it's almost. Um, there are small numbers remain, and the number of how, however many there are, we don't really know. Um, but rat activity at Burroughs has declined to almost zero. So it is at least a good chance to see uh, how the birds are going to do in an environment where there is very, very limited rat activity. And it was good to see we haven't had any rat depredation recorded since September 2017. Uh, for seabirds, you know, it's the first year of data only. Um, so you wouldn't expect dramatic changes. Response does take time. Um, response has been varied, and it depends on the metric used. Uh, but what we are seeing is that the smaller species, particularly things like bullers, petrels, are already showing a positive response. That's great. I mean, in one year, suddenly you're getting bullers all over the place. That's, that's a really positive thing to see. And so this work highlights the need for multi-year comparisons, and it also highlights the need to just make sure we get rid of those last few rats that are out there. Um, because they, they, they aren't supposed to be there. They need to be gone. So I'd just like to thank all of my co-authors um, on this project. It's a huge project with loads of different organizations involved. Um, and I'd also like to thank the people of Nihau and the Robinsons for their logistical support for the rat eradication drop itself. And lastly, thank you for listening. <laughs>